Good morning, everyone. Can everyone hear me? Perfect. Um, you know a little bit about me now, and before I get into my talk, I'm going to do the one and only interactive part of my session, so I'll get it out of the way straight away, because this is the perfect um, opportunity to really kick off your year um, on a high for networking. You're in a great room of like-minded people. So what I'd like you to do is just for one minute, either turn around or turn to the side, introduce yourself to someone who you don't know, tell them who you are, where you're from, one thing you love about technology and one thing you absolutely despise or something that really frustrates you about it because I know that list is becoming to be quite long these days. So I'm literally going to give you one minute and then we'll get stuck into a, a, a good half an hour of uh, technology chat. Is that okay? Yeah. All right, guys, let's go. <laughs> I think I might have been better off. There we go. Geez, I, I, I actually thought I was going to have to cut that short because it would have run out of time, but you could probably kick me off stage and, uh, and talk between yourselves for the next 40 minutes. Um, I even saw, and you were swapping apps already, so I don't know what the app of the year is, is yet, but uh, I'll have to find out. Um, so everyone, um, as Michael kindly introduced me, my name's Brenton Ward. Um, I am, you can tell by the accent, I'm not from here, I'm from Australia, from Brisbane. Uh, it seems as though every Irish person I'm, I meet, either themselves or someone in their circle, has seen way more th of Australia than I have, so I do feel pretty comfortable in this room. Um, I am not an accountant. Um, as you heard, I'm a financial planner, so don't hold that against me. Um, but for the last, last eight or nine years, I've spent uh, a lot of time uh, working with accountants in the capacity of uh, a consultant to accounts and practice, uh, working in business with the finance function, and then also most recently when I landed on Ireland's doorstep, I, uh, I wasn't allowed to work due to visa reasons, and uh, I volunteered my time to an accounting firm here just to see the lay of the land and uh, understand the landscape here. Um, one of the privileges of the role that I have and that I've fulfilled over the last uh, seven or eight years is that I've gotten to see uh, across the world in Australia, New Zealand, uh, Singapore, US, UK, Ireland, Europe, what the landscape is like for the accounting profession um, and how much it differs from region to region. And you'll be surprised um, and probably not too much in the way shocked to hear that the issues that, I, that every accountant tells me that they're having in either in practice or in business or in their careers are pretty much exactly the same no matter where we go. Maybe a couple of years between the, the issues being faced, but very much the same. You talk to a business owner and it is, how do we overcome this technology evolution? How do we find and keep really good talent? And how do we grow quicker? Um, and that's the same, I think, very much in business. Now, I was going to ask the question, who, uh, where are you from and, and what's the, the mix of the audience? It seems very much that uh, we've got a lot of accountants in business uh, here. Now, just to set the scene, a, a, a good majority of my experience is working with accountants in practice. But that's not to say that um, you shouldn't be able to get some good value out of, out of the next half an hour or so. I could talk for days about the technology side of things um, in, in the accounting profession which is why Michael's got the bell to, to give me a ring with 10 minutes to go, so perfect. Now, I stand up here and I'm gonna share some insights over the next half an hour, but it would be wrong of me not to credit and to acknowledge um, the people in my life who have really helped contribute to the insights that, that I hold and the knowledge and the experience that I have. Um, the, the incredible woman on the left is Murray Ainsworth. When I landed on Ireland's doorstep, I tried to actually veer into the technology world uh, because it looks shiny and pretty and I, I just wanted to get away from financial planning for a while. But the world of pensions over here is just so exciting that I got back into financial <laughs> planning. So Mary Ainsworth is probably one of the most experienced pensions advisors I've ever met. 
She started a group called Mount Street Group, and we deal uh, with companies and help them implement and roll out and manage their, their pension schemes. So a really exciting world. Um, now, the, the other two guys are from Australia. J uh, Jamie Johns and Ed Chan are my business partners in an online mentoring platform that we've, we've developed and launched for accountants in practice. But these two guys are in their own rights, incredible, incredible accountants, incredible entrepreneur, on, entrepreneurs and business owners. And everything that we talk about today, I wanted to take it in the light that it's not just my opinion, it's not just what I read in the news, it's what I'm getting from listening on the coalface to accountants who are actually living and breathing this stuff. Now, I hope to bring some of the insights that I've, um, I've learned from the Australian accountants uh, in the last seven to eight years, and also from the New Zealand accountants, because, um, and I, I must forgive you, because when someone says that my accent sounds like a, a New Zealand accent, I get really, really insulted. But I, yesterday I found myself comparing Ireland to New Zealand in terms of landscape in the accounting world. So I, that is by no means an insult at all, if you see that or hear that anywhere. It's actually, um, I think so in a crux, uh, New Zealand is just as much as a, a test bed and hub of technology as Ireland is. And you look at the country in terms of size and population, there's so much good coming out of New Zealand. I mean, Zero, who are here today, came out of New Zealand. Um, and there's so much good coming out of Ireland. So I will compare and I will pull things from different regions. Now, the million dollar question, the focus that we're going to, to really dive into a little bit today is how is technology going to affect our business of the future? Um, there's no question that technology has affected our lives in our professional lives, our personal lives in some way, shape or form in every aspect. I mean, the accounting profession is not the only profession in isolation that's being disrupted by technology at the moment. My own, my own profession, financial planning, I mean, there's not a day that goes by that robo-advice doesn't get mentioned and that you know, my role is going to be taken by a machine at some point. Uh, we look at the cabs, the cab industry, not so much in Ireland with Uber, but you know, that industry has been completely disrupted. Um, so we're not, uh, we're not the only one in the boat, but we're not immune to it as well. So we do have to really take a look at how it is affecting our business and how it is going to go into the future. Now, I will say straight up, some of the things I talk about you will not agree with. That's completely fine. My aim is to plant a seed in your head um, and to go and ask more questions about the area and how it may affect your business. So what I want to do is um, there's plenty of challenges to overcome, but I want to share with you five challenges that uh, the accounting firms that I've worked with over the last seven or eight years have faced in this area. Um, seven, uh, I mean, if you look at the Irish accounting profession, um, certainly in practice, it's probably around four to five years behind in terms of adoption of technology as to uh, the likes of Australia or New Zealand. And you may not think so, but America is actually even further behind than, than here uh, and then the UK. Um, now, what's the reason for that? If you look at you know, the last 10 years, the economy obviously slowed down for a good period of time. So we probably had three to five years where we were just holding down the hatches rather than investing in technology and investing in innovation. So that's a, um, one of the primes of the leaders in that um, as, a, as a result of that. Now, five challenges um, to overcome in the accounting profession, in your accounting business. And the first one we're going to start with is the robots. Now, if we were led to believe what the news and what media outlets and what all the, the studies and research is showing us, <coughs> we would think that the robots aren't here to take part, they're here to take over. I think someone from around this area said that at some point um, in a different arena. But the, the consensus at the moment is, uh, especially in the, on the Australian side of things, is 
yes, the, the robots and the artificial intelligence and the blockchain and all these new technologies are bubbling under the surface and they're being worked on constantly in the background. But the robots aren't going to be able to take over what we do. They will take over and they will replace certain tasks. If you boil down the robots to what they actually do, they're incredible data processes. So the data processes on a lower level that we currently do in our day to day, those roles potentially will be taken over. But then that opens up the opportunity to uh, shift into different areas. So the technology and the robots that we bring to the market, um, and we're seeing them introduced every single day now, uh, are actually going to open up more opportunities for accountants, um, not so much replace them or make us extinct. Now, the topic and the issue of automation and extinction of, of our roles uh, isn't a new one. So if we go back to 1811, they were talking about automation and machines taking over in this stage. You can see there, um, this is all newspaper clippings that I found in my archive um, through um, different sources, uh, but you can see there um, a human going into a machine coming out of the sausage. You can see all the ants, which are humans walking up, up the stairs, uh, going into the big cogs into the system. And then we step into the 1900s, 1920s, the march of the, the machine, 1930s, World War III laid to machines by on Einstein of all, 1940s, machines going to displace, 1950s, 1960s, 1970s. So the, every single period of time over the last potentially 200 years, we've been having this conversation of being replaced and being disrupted by machines or, or robots, um, all the way up to, to now. Now, the, that's obviously across different landscapes. So we've had the, the industrial revolution, a lot of machines coming into that world. It was only until the 1980s um, when computing came along that that was the first really big disruptor in our profession. I, th I think everyone can agree uh, to that. Uh, then into the 90s as the internet got introduced um, and we started using computers more, then into the, the thousands where we started using cloud computing into this era of um, cloud accounting technology, which is the next biggest disruptor that we've seen in the last 10 years. So what does that mean for an accounting firm? Um, it means that if we were to step back into the 1980s and the 1990s to deliver a certain level of fees in an accounting firm or to deliver a certain level of a function in, an, in a finance function in business, we needed X number of, of accountants. Now, in the 1980s, for example, in an accounting firm in Australia, to deliver a million dollars worth of fees, we needed 10 to 15 accountants to deliver on the, that level of fees. When computing came into play, we needed nine accountants to deliver a million dollars in fees. When we adopted cloud technology over the last 10 or 15 years, we now need five to six accountants to deliver a million dollars in fees. And over the next 10 years, we predict with the artificial intelligence and the cloud, cloud accounting, we'll probably need two to three. So the technology is displacing roles in terms of data processing and financial accounts but it's not shifting accountants out onto the, um, the unemployment line. It's opening up new opportunities for them. So a couple of um, points to take away on the technology side of things. Technology is not gonna make us redundant. It makes us more efficient, and then it opens, us, opens up opportunities for us to serve our clients and serve our customers better. A robot cannot replace your financial intimacy. Now, Interesting term, more so again on, on the practice side of things, but accountants are the trusted advisor and they aren't going to lose that status. Accountants know things about their clients before their clients' partners know about them. They're, they are the relationship, they have a direct relationship with their clients, they have a financial intimacy with their clients and a robot isn't gonna replace that anytime soon not unless we get artificial emotional intelligence, which they are working on. There's a, there's a MIT company, um, or MIT study, they have a data bank of I think four billion 
facial data point recognitions and now your face time camera can pick up whether you're happy, sad, angry, mad, uh, frustrated, stressed, which is really interesting and scary. Now, firms that embrace technology uh, and are early adopters of it are gonna have a, a, a dramatic lead on, on their competitors. That's just showing that that's the case now. The early adopters of technology in Australia are really starting to see the benefits of it now from implementing it at the start six or seven years ago. You do not have to be a technologist to embrace this change, which means if you're part of the generation that's looking towards the finish line, you really still have to embrace this and you need to get your, your um, either yourself on board with it or get your team on board with it because the ability to um, position your business uh, that's attractive to either exit it, to pass it on to someone, really has to take this technology piece into consideration. And as we talked about, the lower, last to, the lower tasks are going to be automated in some way, shape or form, which means we have to upskill the talent coming into our businesses with more personal soft skills where they can be client facing and do and offer and deliver on different services. So that's the robots. Cloud accounting technology really comes into, sort of works hand in hand with the robots. Now, the introduction of cloud accounting technology has been around for the last, say, 20 years, but it's only really started to come into play over the last five or six years. Now, Zero, who are here today, aren't so much known in the Irish market yet, but the fact that they're actually here today as a sponsor says a lot. Um, they spent the first 11 years trying to get to half a million subscribers. So in 2015, they reached half a, mil half a million subscribers. It's now 2018, and I pulled this from their annual report from the end of last year, and they're at 1.5 million subscribers now. So they've tripled their first 11 years in the last three years. So we're really moving into this exponential growth territory of cloud accounting. What does that mean? It means that businesses are really starting to adopt this. Accountants are really starting to embrace it. Now, uh, QuickBooks, which is another provider of this, the, the trajectory and the curve of, of growth is very much the same. If you look at adoption of cloud accounting within small business accounting firms, you know, firms who have 80% or more of their clients on cloud accounting, in the UK, and this was done over a thousand firm study, in each region, 30% of uh, firms had 80% of their clients on cloud accounting, 50% in the States and 54% in Australia. But what's interesting is firms who plan to have 80% or more in the next two years, and you can see these numbers are really starting to dramatically inc increase in each area. So the adoption is really kicking into gear. Ireland is a little bit behind the wave on this one, but it is starting to crash over and the players like Xero are starting to adopt uh, and mold the technology to be able to deliver and make it more seamless uh, in, in this country. And then you've got your local players like Big Red Cloud, Surf, and some of the others as well. So when it comes to cloud accounting, it's time to make a business decision on your cloud accounting strategy, whether you're in practice or you're in, uh, in business. Cloud accounting, as a system, as a core of your financial function, really needs to come into your business strategy going forward. The SME uh, owners are actually starting to be really educated by these providers. Um, and what we're starting to notice is clients are actually coming to their accountant for the first time saying, we want this technology. So the firm I worked with in Dublin, are one of the biggest zero partners in the country. And they get knocked on their door every single day by companies either coming into Ireland to set up or companies who are established here already saying, we want zero, can you put us on zero? So rather than the accounting, accounting firm being proactive in pushing this technology out, they're actually having to start react, re reacting because they're getting the requests on, on, on the client side of things. Embracing the ecosystem, these new systems, because they're cloud-based and they're in the internet, the integration of them allows for these ecosystems to start forming around them where you've got, again, upstairs you'll see uh, payroll partners, you'll see expense partners, you'll see debt partners, you'll see all these other functions of the business 
be able to bolt directly into this technology. Now, that wasn't possible with desktop-based software for accounting because it was too hard to manage. Whereas now, because everything's hosted and in, and in the cloud, the ability to connect and form two-way integrations is so much easier, and we're really seeing the benefit of this in businesses. The ability to scale your business. So this comes down to the efficiency. So by shifting not just your cloud accounting software, but shifting other business processes and technology into the cloud, we really make the business a lot more scalable in terms of, um, for example, worked with a firm in Australia who are now just absorbing other accounting firms into their current office by mergers and acquisitions, but they can do that because they don't need any of the other infrastructure of the, uh, the firms that they're buying. They're putting everything on their cloud-based systems and just absorbing the client base in. So you, the margins are increasing and the ability to actually scale is dramatic. Number three, finding and keeping talent. Um, really, really interesting topic. It's, uh, it's a hot market out there now for talent in Ireland to the extent where I heard that people are actually, the recruiters are jumping on planes going out to Australia and luring the, all the Irish that ran out there over the last 10 years back on the plane to come back over and, and get jobs in Ireland, which it, it's, it's fantastic in one sense, but it's an absolute nightmare for, for whoever's hiring and trying to find talent to fulfill roles. Now, using technology and really putting uh, an emphasis on, on cloud technology in your business is really starting to enable you to break down the barriers and break down the borders of um, the talent that you hire. Somewhat of a controversial um, topic because we're talking about the adoption of offshore teams in the likes of the Philippines and India and certain places. The bigger companies have been doing this for decades. The technology is now allowing us at a smaller business level to really adopt this um, process and really get leveraged through it. So it's not so much of a, an initiative in Ireland at the moment, but we are so starting to see the early adoption of it. If you look to Australia and you look to New Zealand, the use of um, offshoring teams for um, processing and for general accounts and things, bookkeeping and things like that, is huge. It's, there's such a big adoption of it now. Um, Jamie Johns and Ed Chan have between 70 and 80 staff in the Philippines between their two businesses. Uh, and they've done that over the last 10 years. It's not an easy strategy to get right because a lot of the time people consider these employees just to be uh, outsourced staff. Whereas we really want them to be part of our teams. We want to ingrain them in our culture. It's just they're in a different room in a different country. The other aspect of the um, outsourcing um, topic is the ability to outsource certain parts of your financial function. So for the accountants in, in industry and business here, we are starting to see the CFO go directly out to cloud providers or cloud accounting firms, cloud bookkeepers, and directly outsource that function of the business to, to a provider that's external to the business. Because they've adopted the cloud accounting technology, they don't need the bookkeeper in the office in the more, anymore. They don't need a desk in there. They can completely outsource it to someone and get the same result at a much cheaper price. The last thing just to note on this topic, because we could talk on this one for days, but um, the I've tried it, it doesn't work um, uh, feedback is proving to be more and more about, about the lack of strategy, the lack of technology, and the lack of leadership in the firm, not so much the ability for the, the strategy to stack up. Number four, the third question I said when we talk to any accountant is how do we scale, how do we grow, how do we grow quicker? Technology is now allowing firms to really bolster their growth plans because again, we're getting leverage through the efficiency. So when we look at scaling the business, we're using technology to really leverage the infrastructure, and that's not just cloud accounting systems, that's everything, that's file management, that's getting rid of servers, that's uh, our payroll. As many s current hard structures that we have in the business, we're getting rid of those, and that's just really freeing up our abil ability to scale the business. Mergers and acquisitions as a result, if we're uh, 
finding solutions and implementing solutions to steps one, to challenges one, two, and three um, are really uh, allowing firms to take on this merger and ac acquisition growth strategy. And the last thing is collaborative and integrative um, uh, technology is allowing this multidiscipline firm. So a big shift in Australia at the moment. Every man and his dog wants to buy an accounting firm um, to bolt into their existing service suite. So financial planning bolts on really nicely to an accounting firm. So accountants are buying financial planners, financial planners are buying accountants, and really creating this sort of ring-fenced suite of services around their client because they connect, connect really well. So there's the ability to do that, and I think that's really going to take off in, in Ireland soon. Now the last thing we want to touch on, it's a challenge, but it's also, um, it's also the umbrella over these challenges, and that's how do we remain relevant. Remaining relevant is not about the technology whatsoever. Yes, we have to adopt the technology. There's no question now, it's not should we adopt cloud technology, it's how are we going to adopt cloud technology and how do we take advantage of it. For the first time, I think, in a long time, there is now a need for a two-way knowledge transfer in, in business, in the accounting function. And what do I mean by that? I mean the um, experienced accountants who are looking at retirement or looking at exiting their business need to transfer their knowledge and transfer their experience to the younger generation quicker than ever because the roles, as you saw before, need to change. But it goes back the other way. The younger generation coming into the profession now, if they have a real interest in the technology side of things. So if you allow them the breadth to really investigate and invest time in this, they will be able to help you accelerate the knowledge transfer of the technology side. So that's nice, that nice two-way street. I'm not going to touch on the compliance versus advisory debate because it's more so in practice. Uh, but there's a lot of noise around that at the moment. The last couple of points I want to touch on is, um, is the people side of things. So we've got that knowledge transfer uh, between older and younger generations. This is the biggest, this is the number one priority on the um, US uh, CA Association agenda. Um, they have 700,000 members and this is what they've chosen as their number one priority over the next couple of years. Um, the second thing is considering your, your talent and your staff to be part of your balance sheet. The biggest two things, um, the biggest two assets in any accounting firm is our clients and our staff. We need to start considering them to be so. So really investing in the balance sheet, really investing in upskilling our younger staff and really investing in the leadership skills of our more senior staff to bring those younger staff through. The last thing is, uh, the last two things, we need to start embracing the beauty and the ability to, to do great things with this real-time data. Because it's not just about adopting the technology, it's what can we do with the technology. And that's serve our clients better. We can create better businesses, we can create more options for people, we can create more profit for, for businesses and for companies around the world by doing it. We can really broaden the horizons for business by adopting this technology, but also investing in our people to push that forward. The last thing is, to be a better business, we have to become better leaders. We can adopt all the technology in the world, but if we don't work on becoming better leaders, we will not be able to create that thriving business of the future. Thank you so much, guys. Really appreciate you listening, and uh, more than happy to answer any questions that you may have.